Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are finally finishing up the desk drawers. This is one I, yeah, I'm getting really excited about this because this will add so much to my shop and being able to actually get things off my desk and in the drawers and off my mind. So that's enough talking. Let's finish this thing up. Last time we left off, we had just glued up all of the drawers and now we need to clean them up. Anytime you glue them up, there's always a lot of squeeze out around the dovetails. So I plane out from the outside to the inside, making sure I can clean up all of the epoxy. Then once I have all the epoxy cleaned up, then I'm gonna take full shavings from one side to the other. And I'll stop just short of the other end and then plane in from the other end. And that way I don't get any blowout on the corners. After doing that, I'm going to grab the card scraper and then smooth them down. And if I really, really trust my plane, I will take a good stroke from it. But a few of these had some switching grain and it's just a little easier to take the card scraper and do the, the final clean on it. Holding them in place was a bit of a challenge. I actually had to clamp them in the leg vise and then hold a clamp to run all the way across. And this way I could hold both sides of the board. Otherwise, if I have it in the leg vise, I have too much um, force being out away from the leg vise for it to hold it in place. And even there, you can see it's slipping. Um, probably because I just didn't actually crank the leg vise down, which I like to do that for some reason. I, I turn it a little ways and then don't actually crank it all the way down. <laughs> the next thing we want to do is actually level out all of the tops and bottoms on these. Um, when, I, when I line them up for the dovetail, I line them up with the bottom of the drawer so that I have less work to do there, and that way most of my work is done on the top. I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to go around the corners. Um, I want to try and go with the grain on each of these, but sometimes that is a little more difficult. For the curved space for the handhold on the bottom, we're going to do some final detailing with the uh, spoke shave. And then we're going to chamfer all of the outside edges. And so that spoke shave on the curves, but on the main outside edges, we can use the block plane. Again, with the block plane, we want to make sure we're starting from the outside and going to the inside so we're not tearing out the end grain of the, the little pins that are left. And then, of course, we now have a drum. Oh yeah, feel that rhythm. That guy's got a beat. Okay, I won't give up my day job. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, we've got this uh, drawer ready to uh, basically go. We're going to be doing a little bit more detail on it. Uh, we're going to be going through and smoothing things out and, and uh, doing the, the final run with the card scraper. But that's about it. Once these chamfers are on, this is uh, basically ready for finish. And uh, there's something that's just really kind of fun about a, a clean, tiny little chamfer on all of the corners. Uh, when you're going against the grain, you want to make sure you skew it so you're actually pushing it down. Now let's actually work on the frame. I'm going to be using I have actually a, a chip breaker there as my thickness. I'm cutting these all off to be a little bit short of a quarter inch. I think I had them just over an eighth inch actually. And we're going to trim them into a square peg on the end. And there's a lot of squeeze out on these that I wanted to clean out. And with a good sharp chisel and a card scraper, you can get rid of any of the glue spots. We want to get rid of all of that so that the, uh, the finish can soak in. And here I'm showing you a lot of the, the worst spots where the epoxy clean, is squeezed out. I don't worry about it too much because it actually scrapes off really easily. And I can get tight into that corner and get a nice clean finish on it. So on all of these round dowels that I have sticking out, I actually square off the very top of it. And that way I get that kind of uh, interesting look to it. I have a couple of videos on showing that specifically. Uh, most of this is just slowly detailing, coming in with the chisel, uh, making sure that, you know, I'll do this stabbing motion so I'm not actually cutting into it. And the card scraper allows you to get right into the corner. You can actually use the corner of the card scraper to, to wiggle it out. Then all of the final smoothing across all of the edges and anything that's sticking out and we're ready for finish. Speaking of finish, I'm going to be using Rubio Monaco. This is the same finish that I used on the desk because I want it to match that. And uh, you mix the, the two parts together. You can do it without the accelerator. It just takes longer for it to cure. The accelerator just makes it really, really fast. And this is such an easy finish to put on. It, it really, it's, it's the, the most protective finish that reminds me of boiled linseed oil. You just put it on thick and heavy, let it soak into all the pores, and then 15 minutes later, come in and wipe it off and polish it down, and it's done. And that, that's, that's the entirety of the finish. There isn't anything more to it than that. Put it on, soak it in, and then wipe it off, and it's done. It's so easy. It leaves this gorgeous matte finish afterwards, and it's incredibly protective. I have it on our dining room table, and even with our three kids, um, there's, there's almost no damage in it at all. It is a, a fantastic finish that I, that I love for surfaces that I need to be durable, but I want to have that boiled into a look, and it really does provide that. 
So we're going to soak it onto all the surfaces, let it sit for about 15 minutes and wipe it off. And that's usually about the same amount of time I can put it on one. And then I'll put it on the next one and I'll come back and wipe off the first one. And then I'll go and wipe off the second one. And uh, then I can go on to the next pair. And it, it goes out pretty well. You can see I have the rough sawn left on the bottom of the drawers. I love that finish on there. And uh, this is one of these pleasing things with white oak when it just comes to life. And all of that color comes out. And it's so, so happy. Um, yeah, this, is, this makes it all worth it. <laughs> so once it's been uh, sitting on there for a while and it's soaked in, then you just wipe off the excess and you're done. And just like that, we've got them all finished. Now for the drawer slides on this, I'm actually going to be adding some paste wax. This is my homemade paste wax I put into this uh, Johnson, is it Johnson? No, this is a Minwax paste wax, um, but I keep refilling it with my homemade from years and years. So it looks kind of funk. But uh, with that paste wax on the drawer slides and then a little bit in the grooves, you can see how easily these drawers just ride in and out. Um, a very, very nice system. And uh, they work really well. So the next thing we need to do is put in the docking drawer. And this is one thing, one of the things that I'm very, very excited about. I was, as soon as I thought about putting drawers into the desk, I was like, I've got to do this. And we made the cutout in it last time. The, the actual installation of it is really, really easy. I put it in place, mark where the holes need to be. And there's four holes that I'm going to uh, pre-drill. And then we drive in four screws to hold it in place. And that's about it that holds this in. The next thing is then putting on the faceplate, which is just four screws, just like any other faceplate. And the nice thing about this whole thing is that it's set up with all of these USB connectors, as well as standard 110s, and it has a breaker inside of this. Um, it's just a, a phenomenal um, system, and it rides in and out very, very well. On the back board here, we need to mark where the holes need to go for that, pre-drill those, and then screw it in. And you can see how this hinge um, goes in and out and just runs beautifully. That way there's there's no cables kinking, there's no issues that the, uh, the extension cord that comes out the back then just plugs into the extension cord in the wall. And there, now I've got a place where I can plug in all of my electronics. So I can put my phone in here, my headset, my watch, um, all the things that I normally charge are they're dinging or buzzing. And I can close the drawer and that way they don't bother me while I'm editing or working at the computer. And I'm really, really happy with it. Load the whole thing up, and now it's cleared off a ton of junk on my desk, and I am excited. This is exactly what I want. I love that open look, and I am really, really happy, if you can't tell. So, yeah, there's the desk drawers, and woohoo! <laughs> I'm happy. So there you have it. I am I'm in love with how this came out. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking the look. I don't know if you do, but I, I'm, I'm loving this open drawer look. It fits really nicely with the desk itself, and I'm getting excited and using this for a long time to come. As you can see, with the docking drawer in here, it allows me to put in all my electronics, plug them in, close the drawer, and they don't bother me then. They're not like sitting out on the desk vibrating or lighting up. I can make them disappear, and I can keep on working on my tasks. I also do now have these plans available on my website and I'm bundling them together so you can either buy just this or just the desk or you can buy the desk and drawers together. So for those of you who are interested in that, I have a link for all of that down below. We're going to be doing a, a few small projects for the next couple weeks and then we're going to be diving into making a floating coffee table, which should be a little bit fun. So I hope you like this. If you did, let me know any of your thoughts, comments, snide remarks, ideas down below. I'd love to read those. And as always, I want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon and people who are members here on the channel. You are helping make this happen. So thank you for that. That means more than I can possibly say. All of the patrons are scrolling over on the side and if you do ever meet any of them, say thank you because they're the ones who are keeping this going without patrons and members, this channel would not be here. So I think that'll about do it for this week, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Yes, even my drawers are powerful. More power! <laughs>